Hey, this video is going to be a walkthrough of my home studio setup and um, some of the things I used in this space and on my kit that have helped me and why I selected it, how I use it. Hopefully it can help some of you out there who are interested in maybe putting together some sort of little home studio or practice space and that play the drums or other instruments. I guess some of this could be useful for, for various other things. Um, so without further ado, let me talk a little bit about just some of the space and the acoustical treatment that you see here in this little checkerboard pattern. Uh, I put this up to just try to dampen some of the the echoing and, and other little negative acoustical elements to the room here with these hard sheetrock walls. This is a basement space I have. It's about 16 by 16. Um, so these are these walls here. I put these two inch thick, so it's like a, an inch, uh, an inch towards the back here, and then another inch of this pyramid shaped uh, square. There's these pyramid shaped items that are in the front there. They do a really good job. This pattern is plenty of coverage just to break up that sound on the wall. You don't have to cover the wall a hundred percent. I I I find this is plenty of an acoustical treatment. I hit um, pretty much all of my walls with this and um, it, it does a good job. I mounted them with just a two little uh, like wood paneling nails, black wood paneling nails. There's one here, there's one here. Um, so these just, these kind of flop here, they're, they're attached. And, and <clears throat> rather than attaching it with any kind of adhesive, which then when I went to take it off would either tear out the the chunk of uh the foam likely and then i'd have to scrape it off the wall which would probably tear the paper likely so these little nail holes will be pretty easy to patch um and repaint over them and so i think it's just a good way to go and it's how i chose to go these are very inexpensive i bought them off amazon you can find this and many other kinds of acoustical treatments they're 12 by 12 um, I got the two inch thick ones. They come one inch thick for a little less money. Um, <clears throat> but that's what I used. And the rest of the space, again, being a basement, um, there's some uh, drop ceiling tile. It's just fairly soft. It doesn't reflect a whole lot of sound, so it works well. And carpet, which also does a pretty good job of sound absorption. Um, so overall, it's a good space. Um, I've got a few other instruments these are my sons. I don't play. I used to play uh, guitar, keys, and so on. I don't anymore. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the the amps and, and other items for whenever I do have others over, we can kind of use that equipment to play with. So let's talk a little bit about this whole setup here. Uh, first, these are uh, some Alto TX312s. Um, PA speakers. They're a 12 inch, 700 watt PA. They're really great for just this space. I've even had these out. They'll, they'll do, they'll do the trick in a smallish area to, to have a, a very inexpensive PA. I, I think the quality of these are great. The, I got the stands for really cheap. So all overall, it was a great little addition. It helps out in this space tremendously if um, we've got any kind of vocals or anything like that to just be able to play it through the PA is awesome. And they're powered, so I don't need a separate amp or anything else. Um, I also have, I'll just go over like quick, this, this camera and monitor. This is so I can do um, Zooms or uh, remote collaborations with people. Uh, I There's, there's a... Um, a group I play with out of Maryland, North Carolina, and one out uh, west. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh, to the uh, rest of the space here. So this is just my little rudiment practice area. I, I have this Drumeo um, practice pad. I think it's great. I got it free with a Drumeo subscription, and um, <clears throat> you know, it's it, it's interesting. It um, it feels good. It's got different tech, uh, different density surfaces, so it's 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 just um, uh, really fun. I find it to be quite useful. Actually, it was a good idea. I forget. Pat, I guess Pat Petrillo designed it, and I think did a great job. If you're wondering on the stick there, what that what that little ring thing is, 
It's not so I can do stick tricks. It's um, it's because I've got a, a pretty severe injury to my left hand. <clears throat> I'm missing a finger and this is this knuckle is basically gone and this finger doesn't flex or bend. So this this just helps me to be able to hold my stick. Um, I, I put it around there and it gives me a fulcrum where I'm missing some of the fingers and and allows me to, to be able to play without losing the stick too much. So that's all that is. Um, I forget the, the company that makes those. I bought a whole bunch of them. They're great. They're silicone, very comfortable. But for somebody with a bit of a handicap, it, it's, it's a really nice um, thing to, for me to be able to use. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about the, the kit here. So this is a Mapex Saturn V MH Exotic. I had originally ordered this in 2019. It's the fusion size four piece kit. So that's a 20 inch kick. And um, I replaced the, the Rezo head with this little custom head here. Uh, 10 inch by seven deep rack. They call it the fast Tom 12 by eight. And it came with a 14 inch floor Tom. And I ended up adding that 16 inch later on like a few months after i got this i ordered that separate it came in after about a year so that it took it take a it took a while i think i, I received this in 2019 and then that um <clears throat> that floor tom the 16 inch in 2020 so it's a couple years old now but um it's just a great kit um these shells are maple walnut blend um the natural finish I like naturally finished drums. I think the natural finish on this looks fantastic. They polish and clean very easily. It's got black chrome hardware, which I think is pretty cool. I wish I could find more black chrome, um, you know, like cymbal stands and stuff, but you, to match it all up, I think black chrome. So all you uh, equipment designers, manufacturers out there, black chrome, what's the problem? I don't know. Um, so... The kick, 20 inch, um, <clears throat> I use a, a Evans EQ pad inside, uh, just have it resting a little bit against that batter head. And I've got a PGA 52 kick drum mic in there. I think it's a PGA 52, I forget the model of it. It's the one that comes with the seven mic uh, Sure kit that, um, that you can order for pretty inexpensive. So that's set on a telescoping uh, kick drum mic stand way up towards the the batter head and then I've got a beta 52 on the outside there for the rezo head and that picks up all my low end and the one inside picks up all the attack and then I blend them together in the mix so it's 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 um it's the way I like to mic my, my kick I like uh, to to have the two and I, I like the Evans EQ pad inside because it doesn't take up a lot of the airspace I think the drum sounds better with it open um it's dampening the head but it's not filling the airspace in the kick drum so that 20 inch kick it sounds bigger than it is to me um you know of course some creative eqing and and, and other things from a from a miking standpoint helps a lot but even just acoustically in the room even though that's i have it tuned way low and it sounds like any other 22 or I wouldn't say it sounds like a 24, but it certainly would hold its own. You'd have a hard time dis discerning this from a 22 inch. But given I'm only 5'7", I bought this fusion kit and these fast toms, ex especially because ergonomically it works better for me. I'm not tall enough to be able to have a bigger kit and have the toms be as flat as they are they would be tilted way towards me if i had like a 22 with deeper toms so um being a shorter person this size kit works well for me ergonomically and sound wise i think it is i, I can use it for any kind of music i really want um because it's deep enough I, I don't think it needs to be any deeper but that's my personal opinion and why i bought the fusion sizes it was just ergonomically better for me as a shorter drummer um, <clears throat> so let me go around to the back of the kit here and, um, 
there's a, there's definitely a lot going on with this, so I'll, I'll kind of step through it here one one little bit at a time. First, I'll start with the mixing. Um, I got three mixers, and uh, they're for three different things. So the first one I'll talk about here is this Mackie Pro FX12 V3. It's a analog mixer, 12 channel. It's just super easy, quick to use. Um, I can mute channels, adjust faders. It's just so fast, right? Like rather than having a, on a complex digital mixer to do a lot, you, you just, you know, you need to do stuff and you need to just get a bunch of different sound sources together to pipe out to the PA. Boom. This is what you use. Um, there, there's a lot of advantages to the digital boards and, and I think they're great. But for my purposes, this one is um, great. I get my vocals, keys, instruments and anything else through here as well as a computer feed. It's got a USB output, um, everything I need right there. So that's nice. I've got the um, five channel Behringer little personal mixer there. And that's just for my in-ear. I'll take a front of house feed, um, whatever's coming out of this board, um, my iPad. And um, like if I wanna run a click on my iPad that I'm only hearing in my in-ear, just so I can keep better time, I can do that. Um, and I can adjust the levels for myself of what I'm getting from front of, ha front of house versus what I'm hearing of myself. Um, so that's, that's what I use that for and why I have it. And then down here is where like really <clears throat> the, um, the, I guess the meat of the, the whole thing is, is this Behringer XR, XR18. So this is an 18 channel rack mounted digital mixer. And, um, this is where I, I plug all my drum mics into because it's got it's 16 XLR inputs and then um, the other two, 17 and 18, I use them for my TM2 module, which I'll talk about. But um, this this here is, is, is fantastic for drums because um, you can use it. I use it like a stage box. So it's in this portable uh, 6U rack unit. Um, it zips closed. It's pretty lightweight. I can carry it with me. I've got a 25 foot snake that feeds it. And then at the other end of the snake, I just use shorter patch cables to go between the mics and the snake from the drums. And then I bring the whole snake into here and all the channels line up. This is very quick and easy and neat to set up. So um, I use it like a stage box in that if I am playing out with this whole big setup, and I'm using this, uh, I'll set everything up on stage and use it like a stage box. And then I'll just provide the main left right out to front of house. And they get my entire kit in just the left and right feed. So for them, it's very, the sound guys love it, right? Because it just makes their job that much easier. And, you know, if they really wanted to tune any of the drums, I just give them the app. Um, I have a guest, you have a guest account in this thing and like a guest can log in and you want them to adjust levels or anything like that. Fine. Um, and you save everything as scenes. So I can always just replace whatever they do with my standard scene that I use for my home studio. Um, that's the great thing about digital mixers is that resetting them to different setups. Uh, you know, most of them call them scenes or, um, I don't know what other term they might use, but but that's just really convenient. Uh, I got a power supply in here and a, um, also a four-channel um, multifunction compressor, compressor limiter type, type deal. Um, so anyway, that's the rack and the electronics. I've got a computer, a uh, little MacBook that I use for um, playing tracks in through or or anything else I need. It also controls the Behringer. So I've got the app that, that controls the Behringer in there and I got my DAW in there for any kind of recording or anything like that for digital reproduction. So now um, with all that, I'll talk a little bit about the kit. So we'll start with the symbols. I use Sabian. Um, I like Sabian. I think Sabian makes a fantastic product and um, it's what I've started with and I've always invested um, in Sabian equipment for my cymbals. And so that's what I use. Now, I, I think all of the major brands, uh, Meinl, Pasty, Heartbeat, uh, Zildjian, Istanbul, 
they all make fantastic products. And to be honest, I think the only reason why I don't have them is because I started with Sabian and I'm pretty like OCD about not having like multiple brands. I don't mind mixing series of Sabian, but my OCD just won't let me stick a Zildjian symbol amongst a whole bunch of Sabian symbols. I don't know. It's just the way I am. So that's just a quirk of mine. But, um, you know, I use I use three main Sabian series. I use AAX, HHX, and FRX. Especially if I'm playing out, I've got a PDP three-piece bop kit, highly portable, and I'll tote around some FRX symbols. These are the Sabian frequency-reduced symbols. And, um, you know, I, I just... I think for small areas and they, they say frequency reduced, but I think they're also volume reduced. I mean, at least they just don't sound as loud to me. So, um, so I think they fit that really well in my studio here. What I've got set up is I've got a 10 inch splash. That's an AAX. I got a 16 inch aero crash. That's also AAX series. And I've got the AAX freak hats. Those are 14 inch. I mean, medium. These are great. Um, then for crashes, I'm, I'm using right now the HHX Complex Thin Crash. That one's a 20. Um, that one's an 18. And then this one's a 19. Um, I played this one on my right and this one the most um, because I'm used to that with the smaller kits I play out with. And then, you know, for my home studio, I got the extra because I have the extra space and it's not hard to set up. I got another one. Um, they sound great. These complex thin crashes are very washy and um, they have very quick de decay. They have a little bit of a trashy sort of sound to them because I think of the uh, fairly excessive amount of hammering on them. But, um, you know, for worship, I think they, they fit nice. They sit in the mix nice. Um, and they just have a nice sound that, that suits that music very well. I think I could use them in a lot of other styles, like definitely jazz and blues. They would sound great in, and um, you know, I don't know about using them in a rock. Um, like I like to play a lot of Zeppelin because I'm just, I think Bonham was a genius uh, in his independence was um, significantly impressive. Um, I don't know that I use them for that. The AXs fit that a lot better. So anyway. Um, moving on, I've got the 10-inch uh, Aero Splash, and I've got a 22-inch HHX Complex Medium Ride. I think the Medium actually has a pitch that's much more pleasant than the thinner Complex Ride. I played them both, and I just find the pitch of this fits with the, these crashes better. There's a nice contrast. It doesn't sound like you're just hitting the bow of a large crash cymbal with this. I think I just my with as far as rides go, I don't know that lighter weight rides work really well. They don't work for me. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. So that's a 22 inch medium uh, and then this is the uh, AAX Ozone Crash in 18 inch. I'm so from a from the standpoint of China versus Ozone. I just I like Ozone. I I'm not the China is a bit too trashy and harsh for me. I think this Ozone is a very nice in between the arrow which doesn't sound too trashy. It doesn't, it's not as trashy as it is just a very quick decay. Like the ozone, or the arrow crash and splash are in and out like in an instant. Um, the ozone here is a nice trashy sound, not as trashy as a China, um, but it's it just, that's anyway, my preference is that over the China. So that's why I run that. And I don't even have a China actually in my, in my possession. Um, that's cymbals. Drums wise, um, I kind of already really talked about the the main kit here. Um, I'll just say that obviously I'm look, using these Evans Onyx uh, two plies. On the top, on the bottom, I've got G1s. And um, 
so I, well, the Onyx, I thought they, that these black heads would just look awesome on this kit. And that's honestly about the main reason why I picked these Onyx. I didn't want the, they have something else. Uh, they have another black head, but it's like a shiny head. Um, I, I wanted a coated um, head that was, um, anyway, so that I bought these and uh, I just love the way they look. And they sound, you know, look, I mean, ultimately it's the sound that really matters. Um, but also, look, if you have a lot of fun, like I have fun playing this kit because of all this stuff I'm showing you. And because I have fun, I play it a lot every day. Every day I'm down here doing something. So um, if that's what helps you to play more, then you should do it. Um, but acoustically, yeah, the sound is great. And dampening wise on these, because they're mic and only because they're mic I'm using some dampening on these. Um, they're tuned really great. So the resonance and sustain is really ideal for an acoustic setting. But once you mic the drums, now you're really picking up a lot more. So the dampening helps with just balancing out a bit of um, what the mic is picking up versus what you hear more acoustically, and they match better. Um, when I'm playing this unmiked, I would never use any of these dampening devices. They're just not necessary. So um, I like these snare weights. Um, they're, they're just very easy to, to apply and they do a great job and they, they, they kind of lift off, um, a little bit, um, they ordinarily could stick, but it's, the magnet's not working too well on that. These, these work a lot better because they're bigger. So you can literally just shut it off like that and then turn it back on. Um, so I have M1s. These are pretty small on the 10 and, and the 12. The, the 10 just has the M1. The 12 has an M1 and a moon gel. And then the 14's got an M80 and the moon gel. And the same with the 16's got an M80 and uh, the moon gel. And you can get these in white, black, and brown. So I got the black because it matches. See that little magnet thing there. Um, or you can, you can also just shut it off partially. Like you could just fold that up like that. So I don't know. They're, they're pretty versatile. <clears throat> I think they work good uh, for recording and mic drums. I think they're pretty essential. So um, that's why I have them. Uh, and moving on to the snare. I actually have uh, several snares. This is the one I have on the kit right now. Um, I've got a Ludwig Black Beauty. I've got um, a G Maple. I've got <clears throat> a Piccolo snare. And I've got a, a Saturn. I'm sorry, a, um, a Black Panther anniversary snare as well but uh this is the tama slpg um bold spotted gum and um this is just my favorite snare right now to play um and i'll tell you it's my favorite a because the sound is just beautiful beautiful full rich deep um good low end great mids uh, come out of this i, I think it's uh, for the money, there's no better snare. I'm sorry. My humble opinion, I, I've i played quite a number of snares. This bold spotted gum from Tama is just, I think I paid less than $400 for it, brand new. And this performs like a $900 snare without question. Um, the shell has no re-rings. Um, and it's thin. It's probably only five millimeter. Apparently spotted gum is a, uh, very, very hard wood because this does not need any re-rings to, to hold its shape. Like if you had a very thin shelled maple, um, even you would probably have re-rings in it and that's just going to add mass. This is very low mass. So it, it, the sound, the projection is beautiful. Even it's not too loud but it is definitely present in the mix. The other thing I like about it, again, is <clears throat> with these two lugs, it's very low mass, and I, I'm not a big fan of big lugs and, and all that. Um, I don't even really like 10 lug that much. Um, I think eight is a bit more of an open sound, but if you're gonna go with a 10 lug, which is what this is, I think these two lugs are um, a great way to go. The adjustments on the basket, I'm sorry, on the strainer rather, is are great. So you've got your your um, 
you know, adjustment on this side. Um, the other side, I'll try to get over there, um, is also adjustable. So you can keep the snare wires very even. I put Pure Sound 24 strands on the bottom of this. And the bottom head is an Evans 300. And then on the top, I have an Evans Heavyweight. Um, it's a two-ply with a dot. And um, for this snare, uh, I've run the HD, I've run the Genera, I've run a G2. And out of them, the Heavyweight is the best overall sound because you can really crank it down. Because it's so thick, it maintains a very good low and fundamental note in the shell and the drum. And it's just, I, I don't know, it's just the, the head that after trying all of those he different heads, I think sounded the best both live and recorded um, in, either, in either case. So that's the... Um, that's the snare. And uh, then hardware-wise, uh, I've just got my old Tama um, snare stand there that I use for the, my Evans pad. Um, I've got a tambourine that I got from Rhythm Tech in a kit that came with like this cowbell. I just think these are essential um, percussion that you should have. There's uh, also a wood block I got from LP. Um, other percussion I'll talk about from my module. The hi-hat stand is a Mapex Falcon um, two-legged stand because I do have also a, uh, can I get a picture of it? Yeah, there you go. I have a DW3000 double bass pedal I do use sometimes, not often, but having the two-legged um, hi-hat stand really helps a lot with that. But the Falcon stand, um, the feel, the adjustability, the smoothness of it, Everything about it, I love. Now, I've played DW5000. I've played PDP uh, Concept, I believe. They're higher-end PDP series. And Tama um, hi-hat stands. And honestly, this one feels the best. The stomp on it is smooth, relaxed, and um, I don't get as fatigued with, with this um, hi-hat stand. And... Um, this the uh, feel and adjustability and everything is um nice and it's significant this thing has some significant mass to it um which just overall i think mapex i don't have any other mapex hardware but i'll tell you what they nailed it with this hi-hat stand with the falcon series as far as i'm concerned um but that's why i have that then for my bass drum pedal i have a dw5000 single pedal um, this one is the, I think the AC, so it's the one that has the, it's not a spherical, um, cam. It's got the accelerator cam on it, um, which I like. And the other thing, I, I tossed the, um, beater that came with it and I bought this DW beater that's on it now. It's an accessory or, you know, replacement, um, beater mallet whatever you want to call it you can put different weights on it different tips <clears throat> and uh, it costs like 20 bucks but it just plays and feels so much better than the mallet that that it came with so i did replace that i do like that a lot um and uh, i do have a trick um bigfoot a uh, longboard pedal too but mostly i just keep that packed away and this is the one i play almost all the time um and i just this the feel and and the performance of that is just really great uh stands wise all of my stands are pdp or gibraltar stands a lot of the uh the extra little you know like the the arms and whatnot that i use are i think gibraltar arms and um the stands are just pdp um 800 series stands they do they do a fantastic job. So uh, <clears throat> more electronics. Uh, I do do a little bit of hybrid on the, the drum here. So this is a Roland TM2 trigger module that I use with the, uh, the acoustic drums. And uh, what I do is I put a dual trigger on the snare. 
I have a single, and I think it only comes in a single, I have a single trigger on the kick, and then I have a bar trigger. Um, what I do is I layer the um, certain sounds with what the mics are picking up. So I don't, I don't, um, I don't have the kick with just the trigger. So the kick drum mics are always on, and and the mics are picking up what the mics pick up. What I'll do though is I'll have maybe extra low end um, in a thump that'll get um, played when the trigger activates, and so um, that sound will blend with what the mics are picking up to give me a, you know, another dynamic to to the sound. Uh, the same thing with what's on the snare. So I may layer like a clap with the head trigger so that every time I hit the, the snare, I get a clap simultaneous with that. Or maybe I'll just layer some, some tambourine sound. Um, you hear that sometimes in like some Bethel or, or, or Hillsong, you know, some of the, the contemporary Christian. I can hear that in their, in their playing. Um, so, so that's mostly what I use that for. And the same thing with the rim. I will put like a um, cross stick sound uh, activated from the rim, but that'll, that'll just blend with the cross stick I'm already playing and what the mic is picking up. And that helps just to keep more consistency. And I think it gives you a little bit more range of sounds. I can adjust the pitch. I can make it a lower pitch, higher pitch. Um, it's 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 just a nice way i don't replace like i said it's not replacing what the mic is picking up it's just adding to it it's, uh, it's i call it layering i'm layering another sound with the sound the mic is picking up far as far as the bar trigger goes though um now with that what i'm doing is i'm either putting additional percussion there so i'll put a clap on that i'll put uh chimes right because i don't like carrying around a, a you know big bar chime or something like that um, I could put bells, um, I was doing a ACDC and I put the cannon on that, you know, and like just, just playing around, like you could do all kinds of stuff. And the other thing you can use this bar trigger for is, uh, in the TM2 module, there's an SD card and you can record loops and, um, set them up in the, uh, the kit settings so that the bar trigger can actually start and stop the loop which is really great. So I can, I can start and stop loops, make other sounds. Um, it's just more voices for your, your playing for your kit that you wouldn't ordinarily have or otherwise have that, um, you know, I think can just give the percussion that you're playing just more, um, personality, I guess you could say. Right. So that's the, um, that's the trigger module. Then microphone-wise, and, and we'll kind of wrap up with that. Um, I don't... I, so, so I think... I, I, do, I do pay quite a bit of attention to mic positioning. So I try to get a really good shot. I try to keep the um, cardioid pattern aligned as best I can for rejection from unwanted sound sources, I guess would be. So this, this is a sure... SM57 is my top um, snare mic, and um, I have it positioned for the best rejection I can. I put this neoprene, um, I had this sheet of neoprene that I cut into strips and then just um, zip-tied onto the microphone. And this, especially on this snare mic, it does a couple things. One, um, it's clean now. I should have I should have shot this before I vacuumed it. But um, any of the wood shavings from the sticks from hitting the hats uh, goes on that rather than on or into the microphone. I think that's a big advantage with doing this. The other thing this does is it helps with the rejection of bleed from the hi hat. Um, so the um, th that just that little bit of of dampening there uh actually reduces that hi-hat bleed quite a bit so that's very helpful the um the bottom i i do mic the bottom of the snare and the bottom is also mic'd with an sm57 um that one is polarity reversed to the top one and um if you want to understand why or more about that you can definitely look it up but essentially 
um, as this head is moving in, that head is moving out, right? So um, if you don't have it polarity reversed, uh, if you're thinking of sound as a wave, the top of the wave is coming um, down here as the, the head um, bows out. And as the head goes in, it's the bottom of the wave. And so they could cancel each other out if you don't reverse the polarity on one of them. So I reverse the polarity on that bottom head. Again, it's a complex thing about phase coherence that you can look up and, um, and read all the gory details. But that's the essential of it. I do not do that with the kick drum, even though that has two mics, because both heads will move in the same direction relative to the position of the mic. So as the batter head goes in, the, the mic is on the inside of the drum. So that, that's going in, and then on the, the rezzo head, that is also going, you know, deflecting out towards the, the microphone at, at the same time. So there's no need to do that on the kick. It's only necessary when you've got them both on the outside of the drum, um, then you'll get that effect. So um, going to the, the um, hi-hat mic, so this is a side address condenser. This is a Shure 181 um, side address condenser mic. Uh, I have that set up for the, the hi-hat. And then on the ride, I have another one. Um, this is a 181 side address condenser. Condenser mics are great for <clears throat> cymbals because um, they pick up the brightness of the cymbals really nice, much better than dynamic mics. And I did do the um, neoprene cover on those as well. Um, not, I mean, it's not really an issue. There could be protecting them from dust, I guess, and, and whatnot. But, but mostly it's just for the rejection of um, the crashes, because really the crashes are getting picked up by this set of overheads here. This is a pair of Samson CO2 pencil condensers. Um, actually, for the money, they do a great job as overheads. Um, I don't know how, what people think of Samson, but I've had great performance from them. They're very clean very good frequency response i i think you know they have a great mid-range um and uh great high end so um you know they fit for the purpose really really well um then going around on the toms i've got these bare dynamic gooseneck condensers i believe these are model 150 ones i want to say um i honestly forget but I have them on all the toms, and <clears throat> the reason why I got these, a, a few, I had PGA 56s. A, they're enormous. They're like these big dynamic mics. Um, when you, By the time you get the cable, like it's, it's literally like coming right underneath this crash here, for example, because um, the cable just came right out of the back of the mic, and the mic is pointed at the... Um, at the tom so it just it just was a, a real obtrusive looking uh setup these gooseneck condensers are nice clean out of the way um because they're condensers i think they perform a, a little bit better than the dynamic mics and um and the way that the cable the mic cable comes in them right through the the this mounting system that they have, which is really cool and very, um, very does very well at isolating the vibration of the drum from the mic. So you're picking up the head and and what's coming in through there, not the vibration coming through the mounting system. Um, all that combined, I think, was just a great option. They are, uh, I think, at the time that I bought these, were probably roughly about double the price of the Sure PGA Fifty Sixes. But given that, I think those PGA 56s are very, very cheap to begin with. I think the only things cheaper are like the CAD mics maybe or some other kind of really not, um, not mainstream brand. Then, um, you know, they did, I think they really did the trick. Um, great microphones. So that's, that's the setup and the space and kind of a lot of what I use and why I use it how I use it. Um, I probably have left a few things out. I got my little iPad there. Um, my throne, a rock and sock tractor seat throne. I like those. Um, 
I don't know what else to really talk about here. I can make more videos. Uh, certainly open to suggestions, questions, comments, anything that you want to provide from a feedback uh, standpoint on this. And, you know, just hopefully this has been helpful. Give you some ideas, get you excited about, I mean, be excited about playing. I think anything you do, it's worth an investment if it gets you on the kit and playing and practicing more. Um, and I'm always trying to improve and and get better at what I do. Um, so, you know, if anything that you add or configure or whatever, use on your kit helps you to do that, then do it. I, I recommend it. Maybe these are some ideas that you can use and maybe you have your own ideas born out of these. But, um, you know, like and, and, and share this with others that you might think um, would be helped by it. And, you know, certainly if you can subscribe to the channel, that would be a huge help. Anyway, um, you know, I appreciate anyone that took the time to take a look at this. Um, you know, stopping here and, and viewing this. And, um, you know, look forward to making more videos and getting them out to y'all. So thank you. Have a great one.